everyone and welcome to another 5.9 Gaming Review. My name is Talon and today I am here to discuss and review The World Ends With You Neo, actually, or Neo, The World Ends With You, however you want to say it. Available for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Switch. Freeze time! Hey everyone, Timekeeper Talon here. If you have never played or even heard of The World Ends With You, then just stop. Stop playing your Dokkan, stop playing your Legends, heck, stop playing your Destiny 2s. If you follow me, then you know why I had to include this and go play this game. But Talon, sir, I don't have a DS, I hear you say. Well, threat not, young one. Damn, I sound old when I say that. Really showing my age there, aren't I? You can go download this game on mobile right now. So grab your phone, pay only one payment of 17 US dollars and experience one of the best games to release in the early 2000s. Seriously, this game has it all. Great story, fun combat, and easily will give you 30 plus hours on your first run through alone if you want to learn about the combat system and everything. So uh, go play it now or i will race you from the timeline don't tempt me okay back to the review now for a little behind the scenes info about this game this game was originally released on the nintendo ds back in uh let me just check real quick i type on the keyboard here 2007 wow it has been a while all right, anyway, however, it was later released again on the mobile platforms and eventually on the Switch, actually. We, we don't talk about the Switch version. That, that was just a, yeah, we're, we're gonna skip past that. So anyway, regardless though, fans have been waiting a long time for a sequel for this beloved game. And finally, it happened. After 14 years, we finally have one. Also, don't worry, in this review, um, this will not contain any spoilers or any of the games, except for like the first hour of this particular game, but that's really not that much. And hey, if you want, you can even play the demo. No, not a beta, an actual demo on both the Switch and the PlayStation stores. Sorry, Xbox. Time to buy a new console? Okay, I have rambled on long enough. It's time to start this review. And real quick last note, make sure to let us know your thoughts down below in the comments about this game. And don't forget, of course, to leave a like on the video if you happen to like it and sub to stay up to date for all of our reviews. With all of that being said now, let's get into our review of Neo: The World Ends With You. The World Ends With You is actually an action role-playing game taking place in a fictional version of Shibuya, which is in the city of Tokyo. In fact, one of the designers for both of these games is Tetsuya Nomura. If that name sounds familiar? It should. He has worked on some other famous pieces like Kingdom Hearts. Now, without spoiling any big moments or anything like that, the basic premise of this game goes as follows. The game takes you into the UG version of this fictional Shibuya. UG stands for Underground. Here you can see the people of the RG, which is considered the real ground Shibuya, but they cannot see you unless it's under very special circumstances. You play as one of one character and four at the same time, technically. The main character is Rindo, a high school student in Tokyo, and when transported to this version of Shibuya, he finds himself in the Reapers game. Joining him are the other three characters that you really only get to use in certain events and in mostly combat. His friend Fret, a college student named Nagi, and finally Sho Minamimoto. Sometimes. Together, they must survive the Reapers game, which takes about a week or so, and if they win, they can finish the game finally. This is a story-heavy game, just like the original. You will become very invested in the characters and their backstories, and their current selves. This is why many consider the story of the original to be one of, if not the best part of the game. Now, if that last member's name sounds familiar, then you probably remember him as one of the characters from the first game. In fact, through my playthrough, I have run into a few fan-favorite characters from the first game. This makes it a great blend of having new characters and old characters, which I think they nailed very well. The overall design is very similar to the first game, from level design to gameplay to its game missions and more. The game is supposed to take about a week in game. One day gives you one main mission via your phone. During this time, you can interact with other players if you run into them in the RG and UG. Uh, these are not actual real players though, these are just in-game characters. You can battle noise, which are the enemies of the game, increase your level, buy clothes, which acts as armor, and even go to restaurants to eat food would give you permanent snap boost. We'll cover this a little bit later in the gameplay, but just to know, it's, it's an amazing system. Them. Once you finish said mission, you will be transported forward in time to the next day to repeat this process for a week again in game. Small spoiler, I guess, the first game took over three weeks and lasted an average player over 40 hours easily, so you really do get your money's worth. You can easily get lost just exploring in parts of the city to find new pins, clothes, increase your stats, buy music, which by the way, side note, the music is amazing and all of the classics for the most part from the original game are included in this one and even some remakes, so you will definitely love it. Thank you. 
ゴミだらけだな And you can even find more. You can also lower your level to increase your chances of having these pins increase their drop rate, which is really nice and actually does provide a bit of a challenge. Back on the DS, the original game used a combination of the D pad and the touchscreen, actually, and surprisingly, it worked pretty well. And the combat was very deep, actually. You could collect pins from winning battles, completing missions, and could even evolve these pins. In short, the gameplay was simple yet deep, lots of strategy, and、uh, just most of all, it was very fun. However, when the original was ported over to the Switch eventually, it wasn't really that good. It sensed that you were moving from the 2D plane to the 3D plane, and they really tried to get you to use the motion controls, which just Really did not work out the best way, unfortunately. So, a lot of people were very nervous for this new iteration to finally make that jump, proper jump to the 3D realm. And、uh, suffice to say, it worked out pretty well. The way the combat has changed, however, is、uh, a little different, but it basically goes as follows. I use a Switch Pro controller, by the way, for my playthroughs. So, basically, imagine that if you're using a PlayStation controller, then just simply you know, map it to where you need to. The X, Y, Z, L, and Z, R buttons are what you use to use four pins this time. Back in the original, Game, I believe, could use up to five or six pins. This time, however, you get four pins, one for each of the characters that we mentioned above in the design and the story section. R and L can replace these、uh, Z, L, and Z, R depending on the pins you have attached. B is going to be your dodge roll, which I don't, don't use too much as of right now, but maybe during harder events you might. And finally, A to unleash a very cool special attack, which basically you have to use when you get your groove up up to 100%. It's pretty easy to pull off in the game and it explains it to you very well, but overall, it's It's very cool and very flashy. Now, of course, I can't talk about the combat without talking about the pin system. You've probably heard me talk about this many times. Pin system is what allows you to perform all these moves. And yes, actually, they are literally pins in the game. From sword slices to freeze blasts, quakes, and way, way more, all of these pins can be leveled up to become even more powerful. And even a few of them, actually, I take that back, a good amount of them can be evolved. In the original game, it was anything for simply leveling them up. And other times, you had to make sure you leveled them up at a very particular day and week. During the game. Using the DS, you could actually change the clock on your system and you could go ahead and change it if you wanted to. So that's just something to keep in mind there when going through all of this stuff. Now, all of them obviously haven't been discovered yet since the game's only been out for a few days now, but、uh, I can't wait to see what they have discovered and what they've changed for these upcoming ones. In short, just like the original, though, the gameplay is just very fun and enjoyable and I can never get bored of it. I just I just really can't. Finally, you will want to eat. Yes, I'm actually dead serious. You want to go out and eat. So actually, in the game, you can go. To cafes and restaurants where you can order food, and when you eat this food, it will give you permanent stat boost HP, style, defense, and attack. Style is actually related to the clothing, which acts as armor basically. And so, if you happen to have your style points at a decent level and you attach certain articles of clothing, you can actually get extra additional boosts like extra attack or fire resistance or anything like that. So, it's actually really cool. The way the game stops you though from spamming this is that after you eat and you consume a certain amount of calories, you have to go into battle to work it off. Then, once you've done that, you can go back and eat. This is just another reason why you will want to battle more enemies instead of just simply the main mission enemies. Go off. And explore these areas and battle more enemies to level up. It can really help, and especially in the end game battles. I guarantee you will not be mistaken if you do this. If you happen to have played the original, then you're gonna feel right at home with the visuals. Cutscenes are actually very similar to the recent anime that was released.、Uh, if you actually wanna watch it, go ahead. That's a great refresher on the story because this is actually a sequel. It takes about three years later down the road from the original game. So catch up if you haven't already, or just you know, play the original, do both. Great series. But those are few and far between, however. Most of the game uses a slideshow type visual with text boxes. However, these do include voice acting, so you won't be like just trying to read the entire time. You can actually listen to most of it, which is pretty nice. So it's basically a combination of cutscenes and then slideshow, and both of these can be spoken in both English and Japanese. Well, I personally prefer Japanese for any game that usually comes with Japan, especially anything that's like animated or anything like Final Fantasy or whatnot. I will say that the English voice cast is amazing. I love them back in the original game, and they do. Do not disappoint here. You get 
the occasional cheesy ones, but hey, what game is not cheesy these days, right? Uh, when in combat or roaming the streets of Shibuya, the Switch version of the game will run at around 30 FPS and 720p in handheld mode and around 900p when in docked. PS4 and PS5 run at a very smooth 1080 60 FPS. While I debated actually getting the game for the PS4 for that smoothness, I would like being able to take the Switch on the go with me on the train. And it's maybe it's because I played it originally on the DS, which is a mobile version of it. So it was very nice just to be able to play it wherever I wanted. And it's actually been pretty nice to kind of write this review and think of my thoughts as I'm falling asleep, but being able to play a little bit of the game as well. So, and because you don't really need quick reflexes like a first person shooter, I don't really need those higher FPSs. So, Playing the Switch version was definitely the right version for me personally. As for the layout of the map, Yuji Shibuya looks pretty much like the real Shibuya, except for some of the weird placements with Harajuku. Believe me, I know. I actually live in Tokyo and I go by both areas on the train every single day to work. So um, I do wish they had expanded a little bit more of Shibuya or at least added parts of Harajuku onto it, which would have been pretty cool. Or heck, even add Ebisu onto it, which is the other direction. But eh, I digress. It's still really fun. Overall, after playing this game for quite a long time, I am very, very impressed. And I'm just I'm just going to say it right now, th there might be little things that are better on the original game, but overall, they have nailed this sequel head to toe. I am only about 25 hours into this game, and I am still not even close to being done. With all the pins to collect and evolve, the side extra side missions I need to discover, and more, I, I just can't stop playing this game. It's just so much fun. It really is. And it's a great game to play over the summer, especially if you're still stuck inside due to the pandemic that's still going on depending on where you are in the world. It was, it was again, a huge task though to try and live up to the original. And while I will say I definitely prefer some, I think the characters from the original compared to Neo. And I wish again that they had expanded Shibuya just a little bit more again, like either Ebisu or Harajuku or something like that. I can easily, without a doubt, not totally biased or anything, give this game a nine out of 10. It's just, it's just simply amazing. Would have, I would have liked to have seen, you know, 1080p, 60 FPS on the Switch and everything like that. Absolutely. But they've already proven that they're not even going to give us an upgraded Switch. The, I don't count the OLED as that. So, you know what? Hey, you know what? I take it is what it is. It's still a really fun game to play. And that's what's important in the end. So overall, very impressed with the game. What do you guys think? Have you played the Worlds Unto You at all? Have you played it on DS, mobile, anything like that? Is this your very first time playing the game? Again, go check out the demo if you haven't already, but it's a lot of fun. So let us know your thoughts down below in the comments as always. Are you gonna pick this up now? Gonna pick it up later, try the demo first? Do you think we scored it too high, scored too low? All that fun stuff. Let us know all your thoughts down below in the comments. And again, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on everything for gaming when it comes to 5.9 Gaming. So I've been Talon though with 5.9 Gaming and until next time everyone, we'll see you all in the next one.